In today's video, I'm going to be taking some interest into this part of the layout, this little cornered fenced off section here. One thing I've been wanting to do for quite some time is add a disused signal box in this area to represent that a line used to divert from the main line so there would have been a set of points further up which would have brought the a branch line down and then if I can just move the camera so you can see where the gravel path is that will that's where the remains of the old track bed would be so the line would have come off from the main line and then can continue down here where the gravel path is and then it would have carried on to the town but obviously that's where my baseboard ends so I'm adding the signal box itself and then just adding some smaller extra details to really make it clear that this is where an old line used to be. So I've got some several ideas in there. So I'm going to get cracking on and I hope you enjoy. Before I get into the video, I just want to say an absolutely massive thank you to Richard over at St Michael's Hill for doing me a layout shout out. I didn't ask him to do it. He just done it out of his own goodwill. And obviously, if you found me or subscribed to me from his channel, then a big thank you to you as well. And I hope you enjoy the content I provide. But yeah, thank you very much for doing that again, Richard. It means a hell of a lot. I certainly owe it to you. Let's put it that way. But anyway, I'm going to get into the video now and show off this signal box. So last night I spent a good couple of hours putting the signal box together. It is a Metcalf kit and I'll just put it there for the time being. So the signal box I'm going to be basing this on will be the signal box located at Bishop Stortford on the West Anglia main line. I was told about this signal box by a friend of mine who mentioned that the Metcalf kit does look a bit like the Bishop Stortford box. So when I googled this and I saw photos of it, I wasn't half surprised at how right he actually is and I thought with a bit of modification and a bit of just adding some small details to it, I can make a quite a decent representation of the Bishop Stortford signal box. It won't be absolutely bang on. I know there's some bits on the real box that don't appear on this box, which I might add, I might not add. I'm not 100% sure yet. It depends how I'll look. It'll just be a matter of trial and error, really. So some of the details I plan to add are boarded up windows. So all of the windows along here on the top and on the bottom and also border up the door and the other window next to it. I also need to paint all of the green sections, so all the green up here and at the back and everywhere else, just a white colour along with all, just to get rid of all the cream as well, as a bit as a Stortford box is white on top rather than the cream. And then I'll also weather it as well, just to you know really show its age and add some fo foliage around it as well, just to make it clear that nature has started to take it over. But I look forward to cracking on with this, so I'm going to show you as I go. So this is the signal box in question. I got this from the website Flickr. I do like using this website because it's just really good for finding the prototype of what you're trying to model. So it's perfect to try and get pictures of the signal box I want to model. So here it is chap who took the picture his name's at the bottom there so this picture isn't mine and that's why i'm filming it in the way i am and there's the sign there on the real thing just to say that this is the signal box i'm after so first impressions of the box is you can really see how worn down it is in the current state of it certainly is being left to rot unfortunately so just zooming in onto the signal box now you can really see how worn down it is when you get up close so there's the doors there and the boarded up windows. Also the roof detail as well, how all the faded paintwork at the top alongside the sole stack for the toilet on the left. So that's all rusted away as well. And again, the doors really, really faded. What I find really interesting is how them windows and the door there are really, really faded compared to the rest of the boarded up windows on the signal box. It's just interesting as to know why that is. Maybe the rain gets to that part of the signal box more would make sense in my opinion. And then coming below the signal box, you can see how the platform started to uh, rot away. And then the stairs, these aren't spot on on the Metcalf kit, but with a spot of white paint and a bit of weathering moss and just fadingness as well. I reckon that would look quite nice. And now we're looking at the bottom half of the signal box, so the brickwork. To me, that doesn't look that dirty, doesn't really look that it's got a lot of weathering on it. 
the windows there again, they're not as worn down as the top window and the door. One thing I noticed on the Metcalf kit and this was that the real thing has squared windows at the bottom, whereas the Metcalf kit has round ones. So one of them things that I'll have to add will be the square shaped boards on the bottom windows rather than cutting them to shape. I personally feel like those who would have worked on the signal boxes when they were all closing down wouldn't have made the effort to cut a perfect shape of the wood, but I might be wrong. And towards the back of the signal boxes, well, you've got all the waste pipes coming down from the guttering. They're more visible on the other side, to be fair. And then on the left of the picture, you've also got the cabling coming down from the top as well and then going into the brickwork. Then coming back to the top, you've got the boarded up windows there. And again, they're not as faded as the ones on the front. Also looks like you've got metal cages surrounding the windows as well, maybe to stop vandalism occurring, people breaking in. And then at the top, you've got your guttering that goes towards the back of the signal box. And then you can just make out the downpipe coming back down. So here's a photo of the same signal box from the other side, taken by the same person. So if we zoom in, again, what you can see straight away is the sign at the top there, Bishop Stortford South. So I'm going to get one uh, made specifically for mine layout with a similar design. Again, boarded up windows, not as faded as the ones at the front. And then you can also see the downpipes from the guttering more clearly on this side. The brickwork's more weathered on this side by the looks of things as well. So that's one thing to note. And uh, you've also got metal railings again on the old platform. So really, they're the only things I can take from this side. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a picture of the signal box from the side of the car park. I'm going to have to try and get one myself when I'm next in the area. But if not, I'm not going to worry too much because it won't be on show for the most part of the layout anyway. So, so far, as you can see, I have started colouring in some places, like the doors on the front. And I've also stuck some Metcalf, just builder sheets down the sides just to neaten things up a little bit. I might even just go down the corners there, just again, just to neaten it up. But what I'm going to do first, is just border up all the windows at the top. And to do that, I'm going to use the cutouts that come within the Metcalf kits. I have already started to color one in. So this one here, I've already colored that in black. And these just slot very nicely in the window like so. So I've got plenty to fill up the top windows. So I'm gonna get doing those first. So all you need to do, get the felt, black felt tip, get your cut out and take about 30 seconds just to color the whole thing in. And as it's card, it will more or less soak into the card pretty much straight away. And there we go. All the cutouts now ready to be added. So to add these to the windows, I'm going to just apply small amounts of rocket card glue to the backs of the windows and then just slot them in place Hold them there for a few seconds. They do tend to stay in there anyway, but I will just apply a firm bit of pressure. It does take a few seconds for the glue to dry anyway, so I'm just going to hold it in place. And I'm going to do the same for all the other windows now. So all of the top windows have been boarded up and I also went over them with some weathering powder to get that faded paint look I was after. I'll probably add to that later on. It was just, just to see what it would look like really more than anything. I do feel like it could be better so I will go back to that 
because I do need to get hold of some white acrylic paint really before I do that. And then I do the ones on the side and on the back. I also boarded up the bottom windows as well and just added some thin pieces of card just to represent the window ledges because on the real, on the prototype I'm modeling a square, they're not round. They're not perfect, but I think they do look all right. So I can't really do much more until I get the top half of the signal box white. So I need to get hold of a white felt tip pen I ordered that literally just before filming this clip, so it's going to be here, here by the end of the week, hopefully. Annoyingly, they didn't stock any down at the local WH Smiths or any supermarket, so I just had to resort to getting one off the internet, which I didn't really want to do, but hey-ho. So while, that, while I wait for that to arrive, I will certainly be moving on and filming other footage and working on other pieces. So while I wait for the felt tip pen to arrive, I've just been spending some time building up the area that the signal box will sit in. How I've done this is I've just added some litten or leaken, however you pronounce it, along with some clump foliage and then sprayed it with your PVA mix and just put some static grass on top of it. And then after that, just add some more fine leaf foliage and clump foliage sort of around it and on top of it as well, just to give that variety of appearance. I feel like it does give that nice overgrown effect I'm looking for. If I do come more down to that track level, hopefully it will look more convincing. Let's get it into focus. So this is sort of, if you was a fig on the layout, the perspective you'd see. I do feel that looks quite good. So this isn't the final result. I will add to it once the signal box is in its final position. I have left the space there for it and then I'll just add some more clump foliage around it and just make it look that uh, nature has grown up along, uh, just around it and taken it over. So the pens eventually arrived. The one on the left is a gel paste pen which I used to colour in between the lines. I've just done that very carefully by hand trying my absolute best not to go over them. There was a few areas where it did sort of escape over but I'm not going to worry about it too much. I think overall it does give that nice sort of appearance that the paint's starting to strip away from the original material. So there are some bits of cream still coming through and I do quite like that because I, I did realise that I need to bear in mind that where the signal box is going to be situated under trees on my layout and the real thing isn't so I've sort of got to adapt it to its surroundings which is why I've gone for that approach of leaving some cream sticking through but overall I do think that looks quite good so now I just need to I'm going to paint the ladder first before I crack on with the weathering stage so I'm going to get on with that now so I've given the ladder or the steps a coat of uh, white paint and I use Humbrol white acrylic matte to do that I only gave it one coat I was going to do a second coat but then because it's dry now, I thought leaving it with a bit of green showing through does show uh, a bit of weathering, fading, etc. So I thought I'll just leave it with the one coat and then just add to it with some weathering powders. So I've started weathering the top half. At the minute it is just sort of experimenting just to see. Uh, the weathering powders I've been using, they're made by Revel and then you've got dark brown, rust red and mud green. So the rust red is the brownie colour. The black colour or the dark brown rather I haven't really used yet. And the green obviously I have used that somewhere. Just need to find it sort of at the bottom along the sides. But so far I'm, looking, I'm liking the effect it's having. So I'm going to keep referring to the pictures that I was, um, looked at earlier and I'm going to carry on. So whilst looking at the pictures, I started to add the thin layer of grime that I noticed on the toilet. But what I've done differently is add that all the way around the bottom of the signal box or the bottom of the top half of the signal box, just to give that first layer of grime that's built up over the years.
next I've pretty much done the same again but for the top half so again I ran another thin line of the same rust red powder to give it a bit of grime build up that had accumulated over time but I noticed in the pictures how the top towards the roof and also the roof lining was a lot more weathered compared to the rest of the box so pretty much uh, use the same method here where I focused more on the lines of the roof and towards the top. After this I got the Brat Dark Brown powder and went over the entire signal box just to uh, just get darken down a few areas and toning places down. I didn't overdo this part, I still wanted the vast majority of the colours showing through to be white but it, I did also focus, like I did in the last clip, more on the top half of the signal box because that's where most of the weathering seemed to be in the pictures. Then after that, I turned my attention to the bottom half of signal box, the brickwork. I just started off by using the dark brown powder and going over towards the top of it and just toning it all down, all around, apart from underneath the platform where, uh, where the toilet sits, because obviously there wouldn't be really any weathering coming down from there, or if there was, there wouldn't be a lot. I noticed in the pictures as well that at the bottom of the brickwork just faint layers of dust had also accumulated over time so I thought it would be a good idea to add those as well and to do that I used sand yellow also from Revel. And lastly to finish off I used the mud green powder and just go over the whole signal box again just uh, focusing on areas where I plan to put plantation and then I use the mud and then I use the green powder just to represent the moss that will come down and form from that plantation. Again try not to overdo it. And there we are, weathering complete. What I've done off camera is I just added a bit more to the roof. I just added more of the mud green for the moss and just a bit of the brown for the dirt. And then I also give a light weathering to the ladder because in the picture, the ladder didn't appear to have that much weathering on it. So again, just went over that with the rust red. But overall, I'm actually very, very happy with how it's turned out very happy i didn't think it would be as good as this again it's not perfect i just had to use my imagination a little bit to just bear in mind what it would look like considering it will be stuck under some trees and bushes etc but i'm very happy with it so i'm going to plonk it on the layout briefly and see how it looks so far so there it is in its temporary position again come down towards track level like that I do think that does look really good so there we are now the weathering is complete I can now move on to adding the finer details like the salt stack for the toilet the guttering the list goes on I'm going to finish up the signal box now for the time being and cover the next part in the next video. So to finish off this video, I'm going to be briefly passing it over to my friend. I feel like his layout, his channel deserves some attention, certainly deserves more than what he's got. He does quite a variety of content, so I feel like it's only fair. And also just to give back to the community. So without further ado,
footage you're seeing on screen now. This was sent to me by my friend Sam, who owns the YouTube channel Official Trunley Close Railway Centre. He's a good friend of mine, and he's also a member of the Ruffles Road team as well. So he also helps out operate the layout at exhibitions. Here's some footage of his double O gauge layout called Oakham. This is based on heritage workings. So he has quite a lot of heritage diesels, like 37s, 47s, 33s, anything like that. He's also got plenty of steam on there as well. So if you're a fan of kettles, certainly be to your interest. He's got quite an in impressive setup. It's, it's hard to see in the footage, but he has plenty of videos on his channel. But the room it's in, it's a converted bar. So he has a bar underneath it. And then the layout is on top of a shelf that runs all the way around the room. Again, you can't really see it in the footage, but it certainly is nice to look at. It's, I do like uh, it's got an incline, it's got a station. It's got a really impressive tunnel and the sound does. And I've, I've actually been around there and when a sound loco goes through the tunnel, it does sound quite impressive like it would in real life. Like my layout as well, his layout's a work in progress. So if you are the type of person that likes to watch layouts progress and all the rest of it, then I'd thoroughly recommend subscribing to his channel. I'll leave a pop up now in the corner and I'll also leave in the video description. Sam also posts quite a lot of train spotting footage on his channel as well. So if that's also up your street, then that's just another reason for you to subscribe. So I'm going to take a quick break from talking now and let you enjoy the rest of the footage of his rather impressive layout. As well as double O gauge, Sam has an O gauge garden railway as well, featuring some rather impressive O gauge locomotives, including a live steam one, which is what you'll see in a few moments. Again, another work in progress, so you'll also see him working on his O gauge railway as well as his double O when he uploads in the future. So, in the meantime, enjoy some O gauge footage.
there we have it. That brings an end to this video. Again, thanks again to Richard at St Michael's Hill for the shout out and feel free to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and you're watching this and also subscribe to my friend's channel as well. He's also got some decent content worth looking at. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description below. So I'm going to wrap the video up here and I'll see you in the next one. Take care guys. Happy modelling.